Hello LEGO YouTube fans out there. I have a special review for you guys today. I'm really excited about. But I'm going to start with the unboxing. Lego shop at home. And here it is. The Ghostbusters Firehouse. Oh wow, this box is huge. I thought the London Bridge box, the London Tower Bridge box was big. This box is almost twice as wide as that one. And while I got you here, I got a couple of free gifts from a Lego. Spend $350 and you get some Nexo Nights. And I will be back with, uh, in a minute, hold on. And here is the front of the box. This is a pretty cool front, of course. And here is inside. White box. Another big white box. Instruction manual in here. Base plate. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, 19 bags, and that's not counting what is in the white boxes. So here is everything inside the big box. This pile here, it was either 19 or 20 bags. I might have uh, miscounted. And then here over here is everything that was inside the white boxes. So another pile just as big as that pile. And I think this set is about, let me see here, it's about 400, about 350 pieces more than the London Tower Bridge set. So, yeah. All right, now the fun begins, and uh, I will show you guys my review when I have it done. Hello Lego YouTubers out there. I have a review today that I am really excited to be doing. And that is of the Ghostbuster Firehouse Headquarters. It is set number 75827, 4,634 pieces is recommended for ages 16 plus now as you can tell this is a picture here of the box and I can't even get it in one frame that's how big the box is here let me show you just the just the side I mean this thing is wide I, I couldn't even grab it with one hand that's how big this box is. I would say the box for the Tower Bridge set might be a little bit uh, taller, but it definitely doesn't have the width. <clears throat> and as you can see in front of me, this is the set itself. And I actually have the Ecto-1 sitting inside there. 
It does not come with this set. I just decided to put it in the review because, well, it belongs in there. <sighs> Here is the booklet for this thing. And it is by far the biggest booklet I've encountered. I mean, look at the thing. It's like a novel. Usually Lego breaks it up into, you know, book one, book two, book three, book four, etc. This is the first set of this size that I've seen where it's one big book. Which, to be honest, I would I would have rather have gotten, you know, the the smaller books instead of one big one. And the reason behind that is if you build this set with more than one person, having a couple of different uh, books, so you know two people could be working on it but not doing the same thing, is helpful. So that's a just a minor complaint, very very minor, I'll say there. Now let's look at this bad boy. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start here by saying that this is, as of right now, my favorite set in my collection. But when I say that, I'm not going to be giving it a 10 for my rating. And, and I'll explain that later. But just because it doesn't get a 10 doesn't mean it's not my personal favorite. Because, oh, I do love this thing. I love how it comes with a little street lamp. There's a little trash can there on the side. And the Ghostbuster sign. You think people are going to drive by and not see the sign? <laughs> hey, you can't park that here. Here is the side of the building. And as you can see over here, these windows are uh, blacked out, or actually whited out, but I'll explain why that is later. But there is actually good reason for that. I like the I like the ladders and you know including that in the design. I thought that was very smart of Lego. Here's the other side of the building. It's not quite as decked out as the other one. But I like this. This is actually pink slime coming out of the pavement, which was of representative of Ghostbusters 2, which I thought that was really cool. They they this set did a magnificent job of acknowledging pretty much everything you could want from Ghostbusters 1 and 2. They really they they really didn't miss anything which is excellent now I'm gonna show you guys the back and the back here is one of the reasons why I can't give this thing a perfect score because the back of this set is ugly now I understand why they didn't you know create a better looking back for this and that's because it folds open and if there was another layer it wouldn't fold open properly so engineering wise it makes sense why there isn't a back to this plus I mean those would be all those more pieces I mean it's all, all already 4600 pieces we'd probably be looking at 5,000 plus just to put a back on this thing but having said that I can't 
the back does knock it down a bit but not enough for me to not still love this set now I'm gonna get in to the minifigures here but before I do I'm gonna have to open up and get some of them out so you guys can kind of see get a quick little peek of what it looks like on the inside Close her back up. Alright, now on to the minifigures. I'm going to start here with Janine. She has uh, definitely the Ghostbusters 1 look to her. She has a double-sided face. You know, she was a lot more flamboyant looking in the cartoon and then in Ghostbusters 2. And for this set, they decided to go with the one more representative of the original film. And then next up, we have Dana Barrett. And she is in her Zool clothing. And this is her, I guess, Dana face. And you then she has the possessed Zool look. But uh, one little minor complaint that I have concerning her is they could have made the Dana face a little happier. I mean, she looks, she looks kind of angry. I, I'm a little disappointed in that. Well, and she, as of last time I checked, she's actually the most sought-after minifigure from this set at this time. Now I'm going to go with one of my favorites. You get Louis Tully. Here he is with the like little mind-reading helmet that they put him on in the movie. And he actually comes with two heads. He comes with that head, so you can strap that on. And then he comes with his regular Lewis head. And then this one is reversible, so you have the Keymaster head. So we get the Keymaster and the Gatekeeper. And then next, I'm going to show you one of the ghost type creatures we get and that is the zombie cab driver from the first film which to be honest i'm a little surprised that they included him see he comes with printing on the back of his head i mean don't get me wrong i'm glad they did i was just a, a little surprised that out of all the type ghosts and characters they made that they made him and then, of course, what's a Ghostbuster set without Slimer? So, yes, of course, here he is. Arms move up and down. Comes with a little hot dog. Cool, cool minifigure. And then we get two other ghosts. Little generic ghosts. Little, uh, like, pink kind of phantasm and then we get a blue one here that is quite similar to it except this one appears to have three eyes and we get the gray lady she is the coolest 
Ghost, even cooler than Slimer, I would say, which I'm not ca counting Dana and Lewis as ghosts because they were possessed. And you can see she's reading Magical Paths to Fortune and Power, which is a, a book that Venkman actually buys off of Ray's occult in Ghostbusters 2. So that's a pretty cool little reference to the second film. But I would have rather they gave us Tobin's Spirit Guide. That would have been a little cooler. And one of the cool things about her is she does have a reversible head. And she actually comes with a whole other pair. So you can have the nice, you know, quiet ghost reading. And then when they go, get her, then she turns all evil and scary. And then now the Ghostbusters. I'll start here with Winston and I have the Ghostbusters out right here from that came with Ecto-1 because I want to do a compare and contrast while we're at it here and show you some of the differences. The most obvious difference is the printed sleeves on these on the characters that come in the firehouse. And also the traps, they actually are printed pieces that look like the traps. Now, I'm gonna sh here's the Winston that came with uh, the Ecto-1. And his, uh, you can see right there the difference in the trap. And another difference is actually the hair. I, I like the hair that they gave this Winston much better. And see, no printing on the sleeves. So that's one good way to tell the difference between the wind, between the Ghostbusters. No printed sleeves came with Ecto-1. Printed sleeves came with the Firehouse. But yes, much better hair, better trap, just better overall minifigure. Not that the other one's bad, but this one's better. And next up we got Vankman. And he is cool because he has been slimed. You know, referencing the first film, obviously. So that's, that's pretty cool. And uh, I believe his head is reversible. All the Ghostbusters' heads are reversible. Just a generic kind of face on the back. And here is the other Vankman. And as with Winston, this one does come with different hair. And, you know, not that this one's hair is bad, but as with Winston, this hair is better and does look more like Bill Murray's actual hair. Or at least his hair in the 80s. Next up, we have Raymond Stance. Now, him, I, I, I think the really only difference from the Ecto-1 Ray is the printed sleeve. Hair looks identical. You know, the suit is identical. Just printed sleeve is the only difference on him. And again, reversible head. And now we have Egon Spangler. Now, I was real excited putting him together because not only does he... Well, let me see... No, the hair is the same. It is the same hair. For a minute there, I thought maybe it was different hair. But uh, he actually come, they made an actual PKE meter for him, which I thought was pretty cool. Because uh, 
the ones that come in in the Ecto One, they kind of simulate that these little walkie talkies are supposed to be the you know PKE meter. Where now the walkie talkies are literally just walkie talkies and he has an actual PKE meter. So very, very cool. Now I'm going to show you guys how this set opens. See right here, it snaps in. Got to open the back first and then the side opens up like so. Now let's do a room by room walk through of this thing. Start up top here. And uh, this is kind of like the Ghostbusters lab. They have a pool table over there. Lots of micro builds. So if you are into micro builds, this is the set for you. Um, I know a lot of people like the modular buildings, and one of the things they like about them is the micro builds. And I could be wrong, but to my knowledge, none of them have the amount of micro builds that this set does. It's just huge. And uh, see if I can zoom in there. There's the terror dog on the screen, like in the first film. That's actually a sticker on the, comp on the screen there, which that is my other knock on this set. Besides the rear, it's that the set does come with a lot of stickers. And for a set this size and expensive, I... I understand that maybe a few stickers, but I would have preferred they all be printed pieces. And you can, above the screen to the right, now the dartboard's printed, but that's a sticker, the little scoreboard, and it stands for M and P. Now, I've thought it over, and for the life of me, I can't figure out who M is. So maybe somebody can leave a comment in the comment section and let me know. I figured P stands for Peter, but who is M? Who is M? Now concerning printed pieces, we actually get a few of these. It's like a cover of a brick magazine. See if I can. Get it unblurred for you guys. There it is. It's like. Uh, it's got the Ghostbusters on there. Very reminiscent of. The time they were on Time Magazine. In the original film. So that is a printed piece. So it's like. Some pieces are printed. Some pieces aren't. There's that one there on the wall. It says New York Lincoln. That's a sticker. A little map of Manhattan is a sticker. And then there's another one on here, which it tells Vigo's story. They looked him up on Ghostbusters 2. But then back here... That little p little computer type thing that is a printed piece. So again, you know, some are stickers, some are printed. And then we go over here, and it's just the stairwell all the way down to the bottom floor. And then you can see down here, it is the containment unit. Now let me try to get a better angle for you guys of that. The containment unit. I was really excited when I found out they included this. And 
even though technically it's in the basement in the film, just the fact that they put it somewhere in here is all you can really ask for. And I love that, you know, light is green, tra trap is clean, the ghost is incarcerated here in our custom-made storage facility. And then now let's go down to the middle floor. This is like the kitchen area. And my favorite thing about the kitchen area is they included the toaster with the pink slime in it that hops around from Ghostbusters 2. That really... That definitely made me smile putting this thing together. You can see my chairs are all a mess. But yeah, it comes with four chairs to sit around there. And you know, it comes with cereal boxes and some pizza boxes and you know, simulating a microwave oven and refrigerator there and have like a little fireplace. Um one thing that I was a little disappointed with about the kitchen area is I was hoping for Chinese containers, you know, and I know they made some that came in the uh, Big Bang Theory set, so they already had some on stock. I, I mean, why not throw a couple of them in there? You know, this magnificent feast here represents the last of the petty cash. And then... Uh, over here, we got this little Ghostbuster arcade game that you can actually see Stay Puff Marshmallow Man right there. It's not the most stable of uh, builds, but pretty cool. Pretty definitely a little neat little addition. And then we come over and they have the bedroom. Nice little micro builds here. I mean, it's nothing too fantastic, but nice little uh, sleeping area. And you'll notice there are only three beds. Now, this will be the first time I example of how Winston did kind of get the short end of the stick here in this, in this uh, Lego set. But to be fair to Lego, he kind of got the short end of the stick in the movies as well. So maybe they did that on purpose or I don't know. But also, you know, Peter had his own apartment in Ghostbusters 2. So maybe they're saying at this time, Peter doesn't live here and it's actually uh, Winston's bed. So who knows? Just a little interesting tidbit there. Now let's go down. Well, before we do that, let me take the camera off the tripod here real quick. Make it a little easier for me to show you guys the ins and outs. Now the car does fit in here. You have to move some stuff around, but it will fit inside, which is very, very cool. Let me shut the doors. Now, since I am on the doors here real quick, I want to show you. Now these doors, this door does open but this door does not. And then here we can see Janine's desk. And here I have her sitting on it, sitting at it. Very cool micro build there. And then we have uh, Peter's desk there. It's got another one of the Time Magazine brick magazine I should say then I wanted to show you guys this 
even though it's a sticker, I thought it was pretty cool. If you can see down in the lower left hand side, it says R.I.P. H.R. Rest in peace, Harold Ramis. That, that was a cool addition. Very, very cool. And on the other side of the car there, you can see there's a toolbox. And there's uh, the bell that rings and the scream, we got one. Then we come over here and there is the three lockers. Can open them up. And yes, there are proton packs inside of them. I'm only going to show you the one. But uh, this is another area where Winston kind of got the short end of the stick. He didn't get his own locker. A little sad about that. And then we move up one floor, and here is the bathroom area. Pretty cool shower. See some shampoo there. And it's got a toilet and sink and a mirror. As you can see, Slimer has made quite a mess in the bathroom. Or maybe it's the Ghostbusters themselves. Single men. Aren't always the best on bathrooms. And then you move up to the top floor. And you can see these windows in the back. Those are the white ones I was talking about on the outside. Because this is the dark room that the... They use for developing the photographs, which was in uh, Ghostbusters 2. And as you can see, there is pictures of Vigo hanging on the wall. And those are stickers. They are not printed pieces. And then on the other side of the door, there is the fire extinguisher that Winston uses to bust in and put out the fire. So yeah, they, the attention to detail was really, really good. Very, very cool. Now one of the big questions everybody likes to, uh, that's on everybody's mind, and I will show you guys, is does, do they go down the pole? And whoop. Yes, they do. Slide right on down the pole. I'll do it again. Oh, there he goes. Very, very cool addition. Got to have the pole. And the fact that the minifigures can slide down it is extremely cool. Now the final cool little piece to the Ghostbuster Firehouse puzzle is the fact that it actually uses the design elements from the Lego modular buildings. Not, so not only does it open up, but you can take it apart. You do that by hooking the ladder there. And then, bada boom, you can take the roof right off. And take this section out. Oops, you're supposed to unhook the pole. But I missed that. I missed the memo there. But yep, now you can take that section right out. Then you can pull this section right off. And again, take this section. And you can take the middle section off, so yeah, you can you can you know strip this thing right down if you want to, which is a design element from the modular buildings, and so that's that's a pretty cool you know addition and definitely more of a modern Lego technique. Alright, so now my final thoughts and my rating. Now, uh, I didn't show it 
on the video, but I p put it back together, obviously. And uh, it literally took me 15, 20 seconds to put it together. So as easy it is to take apart, you can, you can slap it back together that easy. It's, it's really incredibly designed in that regard. So my final thoughts for it, it is just, it's a magnificent, magnificent set. Yes, it, it will put a dent on your wallet. That is for certain. But if you can afford to get it, if you're a Ghostbusters fan or a Lego fan or both, I mean, it is, it is really a one-of-a-kind building here. I had, I had the firehouse that was made back in the 80s for the Ghostbusters toys. And even though I was a kid and I loved that thing, I mean, this thing is ten times that. Just the amount of detail and everything they put in, I mean, there's really no comparison. This is, without a doubt, the best Ghostbusters firehouse that has ever been created. Except for the real one, of course. Now, as for my rating, I'm going to give this set a 9.5. Now, it's not perfect. The stickers are a little frustrating. The back of the building is, you know, kind of an eyesore. But despite that, it's, it's really a magnificent, magnificent set. And even though I am more of a pirate and castle type set Lego fan overall, this is the coolest one in my collection. It really is. None of those other sets have near the attention to detail that this thing does. It's, it's just really, really perfect. And the amount of minifigures that you can get and... I told my wife, all I, we, need, we need a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, we need a Gozer, and we need a Vigo. And the Ghostbuster universe is complete here, you know, as far as the films. You know, so... Oh, and a Terror Dog. A Terror Dog would be cool, too. But it's... It's, it's just really, really, really fantastic. So that is my review on the Ghostbuster Firehouse Headquarters. Thank you guys for watching, and please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys again there soon.